Hello people, and welcome back to part 24 of Ilos, our modded city skylines build. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And, oh, <laughs> look at the skyline. Just so happy now when I load the city with the skyline in. I think Ilos has really come into its own since we started doing the downtime, right? And uh, on the stream on Saturday, I will be started to bring in some uh, outer line suburban expansion. Doing some little part designs over here. With some little cafes as always. And a couple of little school part designs too. So thank you for hanging out on the streams. I'm glad that you guys are still enjoying them. And in today's episode, we are going to be working with these spaces here. We've kind of got three preset grids, all these grassy areas. Uh, we are going to be building the Ilos Governor's Office, kind of a state governor's facility, uh, using the campus assets, some really nice ideas in store today. But because this is a downtown build, we are very much taking inspiration from real life Phoenix. So let's head over to Google Earth and see what we're working with today. And welcome back to Phoenix, everyone. So this is what we're going to be looking at today, right? This shape here, where we have the Arizona State Capitol. There's also the Office of the Secretary of State, House of Representatives, lots of political vibes here. Also the Office of the Arizona Governor, which is uh, what we'll be sort of basing this off today. So I've got some really nice ideas for this. Uh, there's a couple of things we can take note uh, for inspiration. We have lots of car parking out the front. Uh, indeed, a little sunken park design, which I think we've got some nice ideas uh, in store for this today uh, to do something with keys, which would be quite nice. Uh, heading into the building itself, we have some nice kind of forecourt action, uh, some planters and some palms, uh, further car parking in the facility itself, alongside some more car parks along the back, uh, with a little bit of node controlled cul de sac action happening too. And yeah, just a really interesting build. Uh, there's also the state comptroller office here as well. Uh, yes, there we go. So lots of very political focused buildings for a city and we can do some very creative things with some certain assets today. So indeed, that is the inspiration for today's episode. Let's build the Ilos State Governor's Office, shall we? Okay, so before we start, we have a wonderful little custom billboard from the fantastic Turtle the Builder um, who has been making our custom billboards in Ilos so far. Of course, we've seen these ones around. And we now have uh, the Governor's Billboard, which is going to be so much fun. <laughs> Let's have these around Ilos. So we have, uh, vote for the Governor. Get out of my pub. That's a very high definition image of Peggy, isn't it, as well? <laughs> That's so good. So we're going to place these around Ilos, of course. This is in reference to uh, our wonderful subscriber, and indeed uh, map maker of Ilos, uh, Karina. Um, for those that are watching a few candies, Oridon, Eggsy has the Lord Eggsy Castle. So we're going to give Karina something in Ilos, which is going to be the governor's office. So let's go ahead and place a few of these billboards around the city. We will have one outside of the Roy Keane Mall. Vote for the governor. We'll also have one outside the Karina and Exe Memorial Hospital. Where again, we need to vote for the governor. We're also going to have one in a really high traffic area, right up against the main highway into downtown here. Remember everyone, vote for the governor. And then also, right at the start of the city, just as you come off the highway, you have me <laughs> vote for the governor. Get out of my pub. <laughs> this is such a bad accent. So thank you so much, Turtle. I really appreciate those little custom billboards, dude. Just super perfect for what I wanted. <laughs> Absolutely ideal. So thank you so much. But either way, let's get started with the build. So, because in City Skylines, unless you're reaching kind of the half million population counts and really vast amounts of people, you're never going to need three, four level five campus areas. The university just doesn't need that much higher education demand. So I'm going to use the university campus buildings to repurpose them as the governor's office today. I'm going to place the main building here for right now. We will also paint out the campus area and treat this as the governor's office. Okay, so let's have a look at the road network frames, shall we? Always an important thing to do. So we slightly redrew this frame during Saturday's stream in preparation for this. So the width here is 40 tiles. I want this to be perfectly central. So halfway point here, 20 tiles between. Let's come out by 10 units. That's going to be good for me. We will need to amend some of these suburban roads here today as well uh, to avoid this happening. Uh, this is fine though. We can easily do this. Uh, so, I want to respect the little cul-de-sac that we saw, so I'm going to bring in uh, a little bit of node controller already, so early in the episode. I hope that's okay. We are going to set this to be a 200% stretch, and then we can delete this frame right here. That's going to be perfect. And I very much want the uh, building 
of the campus area to be central uh, with this line here. So a little bit of an amendment there, and that's going to be fine. So now I want to start have a look at how we can start fusing some of these campus assets together to create a very heavy political vibe. Because already this building kind of holds those political themes, right? So let's see what we can do with this. I know that the auditorium is a wonderful building. All right. Let's come ahead and spin this around. And then we're going to move it across. So it's central with the back of the main building. And we just want to fuse it together, okay? It's just something we're becoming more and more fond of in city skylines now is combining these little assets together. So it's really going to make a big difference. Again, I really want to make sure here that the centralization is important. It's very much a vibe that we were respecting with our transport hub build last episode. You know, where we have the big central run. It's a big difference to the final build, doesn't it? So sometimes it's important to respect the symmetry. And we'll see what we can do here. We also need more population. And there are some worker demands that are struggling to be met as well, which we can bring in over here today. Save that for our detail and time lapse. Okay, wonderful. There it is. That is exactly what I wanted to happen. Next up, I want to grab a couple of study halls. Okay, so let's come and find the study hall. There we go. Let's have this one right in here. It's going to be absolutely perfect. Let's finagle this into position now. So very much want to hold control when we're playing move it, which is going to give us some much more finer movements. And then just aligning the buildings directly like that. Okay, that is really nice. Whilst we have the building selected, let's come in to move it, and then we're going to go for a mirror object. And then we wanted to mirror it with the centralization road, which is going to throw it exactly the same onto the other side. And I'm really happy with that. And now just look what this does to the building, right? A couple of study halls either side of an auditorium with the campus main building centralized behind it. Just gives it such a unique design, doesn't it? When we start doing this with other campus buildings like this really is quite important. It's quite special. Okay, cool. So we'll also do some car parks out here as well, but let's carry on constructing at this main forecourt here. So now that I've got my sort of main building constructed out of the campus assets, I want to bring this a little bit closer down towards the road here. Again, so that door is sat right at the end of the road here. Okay, let's go in now to some pathways and we're going to start boxing everyone in. And indeed, connecting up those campus assets that do need a connection. Do the same thing at this side as well. And there we go. What a wonderful visual that is already, right? Especially with the downtown in the background now too. Just there. Uh, yeah, such a, a happy use of them. So, of course, the main building itself will need to maintain a road connection, for which I think the Park Life Paths Roads assets are going to be perfect for that. I don't really want vast amounts of road infrastructure in the middle of this facility today. So, we're going to bring that in. That's absolutely fine for me. However, the build isn't really finished yet. Let's bring these pathways down, but for this I do actually want to switch into a actual pavement pathway. Okay, and then let's bring them out by 10 either side. Snapping into those grid frames that are given us to us by the road. And then again, respecting those kind of forecourt vibes that we've seen in Google Earth, I think that the university libraries are going to be just really tremendous for generating a vibe like this today. So there we go. We will also bob a lot of these assets today to get rid of the trees because um, it's very much against the vibe. We want lots of palms around here today. But yeah, just goodbye to the alders. Just get shot at them. Same with the bushes as well. Okay. Gives it a lot more cleaner look, doesn't it? Cool. Happy with this so far. Let's connect our path networks now. This is going to be absolutely great. And then we will also provide that road connection for the facility as well. Let's come out by five units. We'll come to the edge of the building here and get a seven unit snap. That's going to be happy with me. Let's make sure we're repeating the same measurements because you know symmetry is so important today. It's an eight unit measurement, isn't it? Make sure we repeat that. And then seven units back down again. Wonderful. There it is. So nice. <laughs> so just, just so happy with it already, right? <laughs> it's going to be sort of very fun. A really unique build today, everyone. It really is. I can already see one inconsistency with the design, and what I want this to do is to actually draw in the pathways the same distance, so the or the same orientation, so the lights are appearing on the same side. That is quite an important vibe today. 
Let's bring in the road now. Come into our two lanes. Uh, and indeed, we'll use a road probably up until about here, I think. Let's go for measurements of 12 either side out of these nodes. And then we're going to switch into a vanilla plus road. Uh, one of the ones that has the trees in the middle, I think. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what I want. And then let's do a little bit of tree upgrading. Let's grab one of our workshop palms, I think. That's going to be the most appropriate. Bring our brush size down too. Then we can upgrade these. So being respectful of where the nodes land with the change in the type of road, again, is going to pay respect to the symmetry that we're trying to generate here with the build. So quite important. Fantastic news. So we'll definitely do lots of service painter work here. I hope we can't initially run over some detailing. So with these roads, we're actually also going to want to connect in at the pathways themselves so people can actually walk. That would be massively helpful. But yeah, we just want to sort of draw off a square boundary with service painter. Mark the start of the plaza. Okay, you know, we've talked about service painter before. When you're working with north, east, south, west snap point divides, uh, it behaves itself a lot more. However, if you're not on that orientation with your map, um, then a tile brush will also work exactly the same way. Okay, so let's bring these down. It's going to give us a really nice concrete plaza. Let's come ahead and grab some of our favourite planters now that we've been using in Ilos, and I think a couple of little XLs is going to be more than welcome. Let's fuse a couple of these together. So we're about there. That's perfect. Let's come ahead and grab one of our trees again. Perhaps a palm to sit in the middle. Wonderful. So again, you can do the centralization trick here again if you want to. A lot of centralization sort of uh, mirror trick with move it with that central line, but I'm happy just to place these now. I've deleted it. But the same process works for this sort of design too. Let's place these in. Then let's go ahead and grab like a different size plant there, maybe like an oval XL. And let's do a different type of tree in this one. Something that we don't see, maybe something a little bit bold like a Jackie. Okay, I think we just placed two in there by accident, didn't we? Three even, four even. <laughs> That's a lot, I've got to turn the bush strength down. Goodness me. Okay, so really respecting the vibes that we're seeing in Phoenix. Again, these want to be bobbed so we don't have the car parking spaces here. I will do this. But just a nice little forecourt that's also going to be walkable for Sims as well. Again, if we want to eat up yet more nodes, uh, then we can actually bring through sort of walkable connections uh, on this side. So, you know, people are able to pass by the different plaza designs and just maybe and finagle down planter designs so they're not clipping through them. But hopefully you get the point, right? Very heavy symmetrical vibes that we're working with today. And indeed, I think I'm going to be happy with this configuration for right now. We also saw lots of internal car parking uh, in this little campus area, I guess you could call it, right? Governor's office in Phoenix. So let's bring some of those in. And again, in order to respect the ever dwindling node count in Ilos, I really should stick to uh, parking lot roads. These are going to be the most appropriate thing. I think we come out by a distance of eight. That's going to be wonderful. Let's also just uh, use move it and hold alt while we're doing this to stick to the same axis as we extend out the node. That's going to be nice for me. Let's do exactly the same thing on the other side as well. Let's come back for one of those 40 meter parking lots again. We'll come out by 8, use move it, grab the end node with whilst holding alt. And that's going to give us much more control over how that car park looks. And also because of the way the little planters work on the park paths as roads, they're going to add a very small amount of decoration into the area, which again, I'm happy to have in this space. Okay. Fantastic news. It's already looking pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> I, think I'm, I think I'm really happy with it so far. Yeah, again, there's lots of inspiration to take from Google Earth as regards to what trees sit around here. And from what I can say, it's a pretty broad mix of some sort of like leafier oak looking numbers uh, alongside the uh, typical Arizona collection of palms like California's and little short ones But that's gonna do it for the main building configuration. We'll of course come through and bring in a couple more car parks during our detail and time-lapse 
But for right now, the vibe is starting to generate. Uh, let's have a little talk about what's going to happen uh, with this park space directly out front. Okay, so with the park space, we're going to be using some keys today to do some interesting things. I want to bring down a couple of walking pathways just so I know where they're sat within the office build itself. And then we can do some things out here with keys now. So first thing I also want to do is do a bit of terraforming. Uh, I'm going to grab the same layer of depth that the sunken highways in that we set up during our road network frame. Okay, I just want to sink down to this level. It's a pretty sensible depth for everything I've used so far in Ilos. It's not too deep, it's not too shallow, it's sort of a Goldilocks depth if you will, right? It's just right. Okay, so just a general hole and then sort of run it up here as well. Doing the terraform beforehand exactly like we did with the convention center. You know, just preparing the terraforming lets the keys sit in a little bit more naturally. That's not how they're supposed to be sat. So it's important that we do the, the prep beforehand. You can also get a view of the centralization down the road here today as well. That's very important for their city. Right? Oh, so nice. <laughs> so nice. Also as well, everyone, how much of a difference do stairs make to a little open court plaza like this? Really big difference, right, using the libraries like this? Really big difference. Anyway, getting distracted, of course. So, that's going to be good for me. It's very rough at the minute, of course, but as always, bear with it. Okay, so with Anarchy on, let's come into our keys, and I'm going to be using the simple seaball here today. And really, I want to be snapping to this one here. Let's come down by 15 units. We we'll also repeat that measurement over here as well. 15 units, there we go. That's going to frame the descent into the park quite nicely. But I do just want to do a touch of finagling uh, with the nodes, if at all possible. Just so we're nice and flush with the road. Okay, let's grab these. And then just slide them up with the pathways. And then allow them to sit in as best we can. Okay, there we go. So you might be thinking, what the hell is happening here? Bear with it. <laughs> <laughs> we have a plan today, for once. Right. Come into our seawall keys again. Now I want to come onto the curve road tool. I'm going to do curves of six. Okay, really happy with that. Then I want to grab my straight pieces again. And we're going to do a measurement of five. That's really great. Let's come back onto a road guideline now so we can hit that same measurement. Then we're going to do another measurement of five to hit that same road guideline, which is going to give us um, another entrance into the sunken park. Okay. Exactly the same thing now here. We're going to come back to our curve tool and we're going to curve by six and then come up by six. So there's some really nice designs that you can put together with these kind of like symmetrical parklands, um, especially using like the sunken vibe like this, like we've seen in Phoenix. And um, really cool. Again, I'm going to do a curve of six, which is finished off by a straight section of five on the angle snap. Snap to the road guideline as we come back in. Another measurement of five. Another curve of six. And let's adjust our positioning so we can see the measurements. And that's going to connect in perfectly. And then once you've got your keyframes in, uh, it's now just a case of whacking up the brush strength with the level terrain tool. And then peeling back all of that terrain that now sits up against the key walls. And then what we will present ourselves with, uh, once it's service painted, is an opportunity to do a little sunken outdoor park plaza that's very much customized to your shape and size and i just think seeing what we saw in google Earth, all those car parks and that kind of sunken memorial plaza that we've seen in phoenix this is going to be such a nice way of sort of respecting that design i hope anyway we'll we'll see <laughs> we'll see how it turns out of course okay, but the keys aren't done yet of course there's more we can do and more nodes that we can eat Let's come ahead and grab a city key wide, all right? And we're going to draw this out by three units. We're going to select the entire thing with move it, and then we're going to drag it. And we're going to bring it into this space over here. Okay, let's come ahead and grab the final node. And again, let's just position it as and where we want. So the terraforming when you're doing this can be extremely finicky. Um, it's not the most sort of intuitive vibe ever. So I just want to sing it back a little bit. And then just a touch of terraforming now just to peel away that land mass. Okay, let's bring it back up a little bit here too. 
I just want to expose it, which is looking really rough and ready right now. I totally realize this. Uh, but what we will do is come through uh, with Service Painter across the entire base of the park, actually. Uh, because we're going to be putting decals down here if we don't paint the surface beforehand. But you, you can still do it after, it just looks weird. But um, it will give the decals a texture uh, of the grass, which looks very unusual. So we have to... Uh, it doesn't have to be concrete surface painter. Any of your surface painters will work. Um, it's the same process of getting rid of the grass sprites uh, sort of on, in and around different areas of the city that we've had before. So we can see the point here. This clearly requires a touch more finagling with Move It and different bits and pieces, but you get the point of using these seawall keys as kind of sense down into the park, right? So of course, citizens won't actually walk um, on these pathways here. We do need to give them um, a connection ourselves, for which again, with Anarchy on, we can now just bring through a, um, I'm actually going to use a, a gravel pathway rather than the concrete one. Okay, and then I just want this to come straight the way through. And this now becomes a walkable space. Exactly the same thing over here as well. Let me join these through. Which makes the space walkable for our sims. And of course, surface painter and decoration can help here. Alongside more of our stair keys to get this vibe to sit exactly how we want. Okay. But so far, I am very much enjoying the sort of vibe that's beginning to develop in this space. Okay, I think this arterial frame can now be downgraded, but we'll have a look at that in a second. Probably just take it out entirely for right now, actually. Alright, so this is the initial premise for the sort of outdoor frontage park, if you like. Wonderful. Let's start talking about how we can detail it. So I want to search one of my tiles at Zoo Tile would also work really nicely here. But I'm very much a fan of the uh, herringbone uh, sort of decals at the minute, the little sort of red brick ones. So I'm going to go for these. We're going to come up for linear fence for with the prop line tool, which is going to allow us to draw these out exactly as and where we want them. We also want uh, prop anarchy, prop line tool anarchy on. There we go. So we can come across the pathways that we've drawn. So these little decals, they do actually get stuck up the side of the key a little bit. You can see this. So they kind of stretch out like that. We really want to avoid that. That's going to murder the build. So we want to draw in a row of these decals that's just beyond the edge of it. Maybe like there. Touch closer perhaps. There we go. That's what we want. And then just drawing this straight the way through now up the other side. It will connect about there. Okay. Very janky at the minute, I, I, I do realise, but, but please bear with it. All right. Do the same thing over here again too. Bring these decals close to that key wall so we can get them without them sort of peeling up it, if you like. And then likewise, we'll also bring one down the opposite side. It's going to give us some nice crisscrossing patterns in the middle. Let's then come into a circular fill uh, with the prop line tool on. Because we're going to want to do a nice big circle in the middle now. And uh, lots of tight spacing is important to get the flush edges against the decal here. So if you're having trouble with that, that's probably why. Okay, so let's judge it about as central as we can guess it here. Let's go for about here, I think. That should be good for me. Yeah, that's going to be great. So now, again, I'm just going to carry on re-terraforming this entire space now so everything's flat. And then we can come back and start talking about some inner park uh, plaza detailing too. So we're going to use some of our terrace planter uh, net concrete networks, which are my favorite things in the world. <laughs> so you love these. They do unfortunately use nodes, but you know, I've, I've got to use a node at some point again, right? So we really want to draw these in now to fill the little sort of quarter circles that we have. Okay. Quantum angle snap. Got a nice curve in like that. And then let's just come in to move it, grab our uh, pointer tool, and then just finagle any positions into the corners that we want to. A little bit of refinement here. It's absolutely fine by me. Let's come in now and just grab only nodes uh, using the move it marquee, which we can grab all of them here without damaging the other ones. There we go. Copy and paste that. Give it a little spin and twist, and then we should be able to uh, drop it in on this side. Again, it's going to want a little bit of finagling in order to 
give it the exact positionings that we like. Let's bring it up here. Let's not do that one. Let's bring let's bring the node of the planter back into. Okay. And then any slight refinements to uh, reveal the tileage beneath, if you like. Okay, and then you can start to come up with some uh, really nice sort of park planter designs now. However, things aren't even remotely finished. Let's come back in and now just unsurface paint the space that is occupied by the planters. We won't be able to tell anymore because we have uh, decals and indeed networks around this now. Come into some of those favourite rocks that we've been enjoying in Ilo so far. Some of these little decorative ones. Which have really taken the Discord by storm. You guys that are in there have been uh, absolutely smashing it. And whilst I remember, uh, please do come and join our Discord. Um, it is linked down below. We're a, a friendly bunch. As long as you're friendly as well. If you're, if you're a bit of a knob, it's probably best you stay away. But do come and join us. We have a nice time in the Discord. Come into some fountains now. We're going to grab a little 20 meter jet one. Okay, quite impressive uh, water features out here. We're going to go for... We'll do that one in a minute. Let's go for a little 40 meter jets in the corner. And then we're going to search for our red light. And I know which one we want to use. So we're going to go for the red mounted wall light. Come on to our nighttime view so we can see this. There we go. Yes, please. That's very nice, isn't it? So we can repeat the same process on this other side now. After which we can just grab uh, buildings and props. This will make it a lot easier. So just select everyone in, and then again give it a little bit of a rotate into the new position, and then we should be okay. We should have both the lights in now. So the governor's favourite colour is red, so we were very much using the red after dark lights here to respect the park, and of course just sort of make it pop a little bit, right? We're such a huge, enormous lover of these rock gardens in Ilos now, and I think a little bit of... Uh, finagling around now with some vanilla bushes, especially the vanilla palms, uh, for which we can use the uh, less than and more than signs to actually increase the size of these with the new tree anarchy mod. I had no idea this was a thing. This is so nice. So that's just your comma and full stop or less than and greater than symbols on your keyboard with the new tree anarchy that will control the size of a tree. Very handy. Drop some of these little uh, vanilla palm plants around. Okay, we've got some little exposed concrete here as well, but we can always tidy this up, right? And let's also get some uh, perhaps shorter California palmies in here too. There we go. Oh, California shorties rather, not palmies. <laughs> we're, not, we're not calling them palmies. Okay, so classic Ilos rock gardens, okay, with fountains and planters to really help hammer home the point of a landscaped park like this. Okay, I hope you've seen the point and the inspiration here. It's quite nice, isn't it? And of course, we can turn this into a park area, have people walk through here, get some cafes and restrooms in, uh, which we absolutely will do. Okay, but that's the initial premise for the central park design. Uh, let's now have a look at some of the company uniques and designs that are going to fill this space here. And then we can probably head into looking at bringing in some public transport integration. We do have a metro here, um, which I believe isn't hooked in at the minute. And we've also got a bus line over here too that we can probably bring uh, some bus passengers in on. Or at least feed a bus line down this end of the suburb as well. So now let's have a little chat about what's going to happen in these spaces here. I'd like to come in and drop in a unique building. And this is going to be the Academic Library. Now this sits just so perfectly at the end of this road, right? It blends in tremendously well with the actual campus uh, campus buildings themselves. I guess it's like city campus, right? It's just called campus, which is a little bit weird. But you know, this is going to work uh, really nicely as part of this build. So I do just want to give it a little bit of breathing room. So let's see how far we can move this back before it becomes disconnected. Yeah, pretty much exactly where we need it to be. So again, we're going to want to bob all of the orders off of this building because they're awful. On to the second one as well. Yeah, no orders, no bushes. And then we will also do our own detail in here today as well. Fantastic. So just by giving the asset a little bit of breathing room to the point where it's still connected, of course, we want it to receive services. That's going to be about good for me. So it's going to work really nicely at decorating this main arterial here as well. And then exactly like we did out the front of the campus buildings, we can now just expand a little concrete forecourt out the front 
Did lots more planter detailing out here as well. Uh, let's have a little look at some of our gravel planters. Real huge fan of these at the minute. These are very nice. Um, actually, should we stick to... Yeah, well, let's, let's go for some gravel. Let's, let's mix it up a little bit. So let's place in a square frame. We will complement the square frame with uh, two circulars either side of it. If we can try and line them up a little more sensibly than that. There we go. Same thing on this side. So that's going to give us like a little oval sort of pill shaped planter. Okay, and again, I think if we come down into some of our smaller uh, trees now. So let's go for a medium one first. How about we place in one of these? That's going to be quite nice, right? I think. Make sure we did actually place one. There we go. Forever remember forgetting to return off the uh, push strength thing. Okay, let's come down now to some smaller little colourful flowers, perhaps. Any bushes that you found off the workshop are always nice and appreciated here, right? And then maybe a couple of little red bushes either sides of the yellow here. Okay, and then let's grab the entire thing now with just, uh, we want props and trees. Grab all of those, and then we can bring this into the adjacent corner, which is going to help really detail this concrete forecourt uh, out the front of the academic library. Let's also go ahead and grab a bench as well. Lots of very cute little detailing like this in today's episode, everyone, so prepare yourselves. Uh, the liberal arts bench is a really nice looking kind of for lack of a phrase, political looking bench, isn't it? It's quite well maintained. You know, how the other half live. And there we go. Okay, so just a touch of prop detailing at the front of the academic library can really bring a whole new layer to it. And that's going to sit really nicely as part of our governor's build, isn't it? Lots of very important buildings sat opposite this area now. Cool. Let's come back in and discuss some further car parking. So I'm going to grab one of my two lane roads again. Uh, let's just go for the American plane ones. Bring this straight across. So we're also seeing a fair bit of multi-story action happening around this part of Phoenix. So I'm going to bring in a couple of standard parking garages. These are the ones that we used last episode. Then going to use a service road along the back edge of this building here. We can see though where the node here isn't really playing fair game though. So let's come on with a road length instead. We want to align up with that road guideline of the main arterial frame here. Let's go ahead and grab these little yellow dash roads now. And there we go, that's gonna be grand. Very happy with that. Come back into car park roads now, and then we're gonna grab a couple of our little small ones. Uh, definitely some of these 22 meter parking lots, I think. Let's come off the guideline again. And then just wanna align these with a road length uh, to sit calmly behind the multi-story. Do a couple little units of eight. Wonderful, happy with that. And then a little bit of service painter is going to go a long way here again. Just to help bring in some different textures and palettes into the downtown now. So not everything is sort of endlessly concreted. Okay. There we go. Let's bring in a little bit of these. Also the same around the back here as well. And we can create a little bit of open desert space uh, within the downtown frame itself. Where we are just encroaching upon the road. We want to be a little more precise there. There we go. And then again. A little bit of our Ilos Forest Brush. That's the Noob's Guide Forest. Let's go for a touch of Ilos Rural. Okay, so we can get some Sueros in here. Some Palms as well, of course. I'm going to bring up the brush strength just a touch, so it's a little more severe. I definitely want some Live Oaks here as well. So nothing too landscaped in these car parks. Let's dive back into the world of content creator or workshop Palms indeed. Okay, some of these in between. And this should really help decorate the approach on this arterial frame now into uh, the rest of the governor's facility. It's all really coming together, isn't it? Nice. <laughs> Just a huge, enormous fan of how this build sort of all comes together like this, all right? Yeah, just really, really enjoying it. So we could also come back into at the university campus stuff and use the school of law if we wanted to. So I was thinking of using this in the build, but I think it's a little bit too bold for exactly what I'm after. I might include it here because there is some more sort of political theme buildings um, out this side of the campus area or this side of the, the governor's office anyway. 
So we might include that. We'll we'll just kind of wait and see. But really, a lot of the other kind of campus buildings will work really nice, sort of scattered around at this side of the facility. There's a couple of different ones we can use. The bookstore it is always a firm favourite in a downtown. And that's going to work really nicely uh, to sort of sit against the academic arts library thing. What's it called? Academic library. There we go. Not academic arts library. <laughs> Ignore me. Okay. And then how about a little chess club as well? Again, which is going to want to be heavily bobbed off uh, to get rid of the orders that are present here. Let's go ahead and grab those. Goodbye. There we go. Fantastic. And then again, what we can do now in the spaces between where we're placing all these very important buildings is bring through just a regular vanilla walking path. And then lots of service pay interaction here with the right texture, of course. Um, it's really just going to help create little walkable alleyways between all these really impressive sort of government style buildings. Also want to get rid of the bushes off of this asset as well. Goodbye. There we go. And then paint all this in. Exactly the same process now with like planters. Uh, let's come back in and find uh, some of our favourite styles. It can be sort of a mix and match. Why don't we have some over ones this time? And we can come on with a little bit of prop line tool. Let's go ahead and increase our space in a little bit. Let's go for 25 meters. A couple little planters here. Let's come ahead and pick out a tree that we don't really use that often. And there is a lot of palms around this side of Phoenix, but I would like to try and differentiate it a little bit in Ilos's brush if we can. Perhaps uh, some junipers will be more than welcome into the governor's office. Okay. And then before we know it, just taking this as like a spice sample, right? We've got different sides of buildings backing on now to little alleyways that peel between these complexes buildings. And it all kind of comes together to make little walkable spaces in and around the facility like this. All right. Wonderful. Fantastic. So I did also mention public transport as well. Uh, let's have a look at the current metro situation. So, of course, the big metro plaza in the downtown is um, a big boy. So let's extend this line down onto this platform now. There we go. Let's also add in the stops back into the central plaza itself. And then let's also look at a bus line for which we have no current bus line serving the suburb, so this is fine. Uh, let's come ahead and throw in a new stop right here. Thankfully, we have the intercity platform prepared. Uh, and I would like him to come through the one-way system here, so let's have him stop outside of the academic library. He can then just meander his way uh, past a little bit of metro convergence. Okay, Always important that we bring public transport networks together so people can switch back and two between. It's always tremendously appreciated. And then we'll bring it through the suburb. Stop at the park. And come back through this suburb. And then I would like you to ideally land back on this side of the... Again, we'll, we'll have the bus stop here so it's right next to the metro station. And then you can loop back through and complete your circuit at the bus hub. Which is going to allow our buses to form a little bit easier around here. Let's come into public transport and we'll grab a little bit of taxi assets and again a taxi stand is always going to work really nicely alongside a metro station and bus stop as well just to help expand the vibe. And I think perhaps a little part life info booth here too just to help expand our public transport assets. Okay then we can get a little bit of forest brush. And we can bring these through. Let's go ahead and grab some sort of chunkier, uh, leafier trees if we like. I'm a fan of them in this area. Wonderful. So, touch more personality when our public transport stops. That's going to be absolutely fine. But otherwise, guys, that does feel like a good point for a detailing time lapse. We're going to come around the entire main complex here, add in all of our car parking spaces. Alongside some more landscaped car parking and indeed uh, repeated tree designs out the front up to the main building. Uh, continue to add in some more surrounding residential. So this space here isn't empty. I might also bring in the School of Law. I think I'm going to place it and see how I feel. I think it might just be a little bit too big for what I'm after here. Uh, continue to finagle some campus assets in around to fill these spaces here with more of those sort of tight walkable alleyway spaces where people can merge back into from this campus to the rest of the road frame. 
a little bit of surface painter as and where it's needed, like over here at the back of the academic library. And then lots of trees around the main plaza. Lots of our usual detailing, uh, bringing some park attractions here alongside some benches. And our usual kind of sort of parky plaza detailing that we're getting used to in Ilos now. And otherwise just generally tie the build together and let it sit into Ilos' downtown a little more organically. But let's detail the governor's office and then we'll be right back. Okay guys, welcome back. <laughs> so, there's been a little bit of an issue with Ilos since we moved into the detailing time lapse yesterday. 
Um, the map broke uh, completely and entirely. We could not get the city to load. I went off to the workshop to get a police car prop <laughs> for some detailing. And the map died. So what actually happened was um, the North American Rail Packs, which is what we're using for ILOS's rail network, um, these have been entirely removed from the workshop yesterday. And because the networks are embedded in as part of the map without the files from the workshop, the map would not load. And ILOS actually temporarily died. We could not get into it. There was no way around it. However, one of our wonderful subscribers, uh, the retired Mandalorian, uh, actually had the raw files of the North American Rails on his machine, so I was able to install them locally. So as a thank you to Mando, we're going to name the academic library after him to be the retired Mando library. So thank you so much, dude. Like, seriously, guys, massive shout out to Mando and also to uh, Eggsy and Karina again uh, for helping me diagnose the issues and then for Mando for supplying the files. Just It's really heartwarming that we have a community that can just jump to my rescue <laughs> and help resuscitate Ilos whenever it dies like that. Um, just absolutely enormous, guys. I really appreciate that. So thank you so much. Just uh, just crazy. But either way, let's do a detailing review, right? <laughs> this is what we're to do. So the Central Park has now been just symmetrized, right? <laughs> Symmetricalized, whatever you want to call this. Um, lots of repeated tree designs, lots of fence gardens and rocks. Now, thankfully, adding in the lights at night time made this a lot more tolerable. When it was just the red, it did look a little bit like sort of Darth Vader's wet dream. It was very dark and very red. It looked a bit like the, the Death Star. <laughs> it was very evil looking. But thankfully now the regular lights have kind of took a little bit of the sting out of the red. Uh, further afield, we brought in one of the little statues alongside some more detailing in around the plazas, which is getting uh, lots of nice use now, nice and busy. Alongside some further planter designs over this side. I uh, tried to respect the tree palette that was seen in Phoenix around the Arizona governor's office. Um, with a really random mix of trees, some larger oaks, palms, colourful trees in there too, bushes. Um, it's just a whole mix of everything, so try to respect that. Um, also fused together the uh, research centre from the universe, from the Modern City Centre pack. No, not Modern City Centre, high-tech content creator pack, sorry. And the intelligence agency as well. Just so there's a little bit of like a police presence nearby to the uh, governor's office. And then a little impounded RV, some police cars all ready to head out, a little shed and some props just to sit alongside the station with some chain link fencing. Uh, fused together some of the Avania West Coast building assets, also did the same over here too. Just piecing together different shapes of them, and um, these are really nice assets, these ones. I uh, continue to detail up our car park and of course added in another university building. Uh, this is the laboratories, just one that I'm a huge fan of. Um, added more walkable space between the buildings, um, which really adds a lot of importance to the area, I think. When we've got people moving back and to between these big open concrete plazas, and um, really helps to settle things in, I find. And then around the back, we have some more symmetry with some trees and some covers um, on the car parks themselves. And then just generally sort of blended it all in uh, to fit together quite nicely. And then there's also a little bit of commercial with some green belt and some more multi-story car parking over here too. Uh, alongside the post office. However guys, that is going to do it for today's episode. I would like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, likes, comments and shares below really help me out. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, then please feel free to leave a dislike as well. If you'd like to help support the channel, there are links down to merchandise, instant gaming below. And Patreon as well, don't forget that. <laughs> there's Patreon too. Enormously happy with this and a really fantastic creative use of the campus assets. I hope you might have found some inspiration as to how you can actually satisfy university demand with a very specific build like this, with like a governor's office. Um, certainly possible in vanilla as well, and without the fusing of course. But orientation can certainly be factored into these things. Please do hang around for the cinematics because quite frankly this place is amazing at night time. Especially with the nighttime skyline now behind it. It's a... Uh, Truly really quite special, <laughs> really enjoyed it. And of course, a wonderful uh, homage to the governor, to Karina, and for all the hard work that she does on the channel. I hope it's a uh, appropriate sort of rival build to Lord Eggsy's castle in Oridon. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, Karina. Yeah, thank you for everything you do for me. Um, yeah, been around since Bagusia. She's really special, and she's just a full-time legend. 
and very much the mum of our community. But well, enjoy the cinematics, otherwise I will shut up and I will leave it there. Let's thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.